Kerry here from Homestead How. Welcome to our homestead. Thanks for stopping by. If you're new to our channel, we've been homesteading for about five years now. And one of the biggest mistakes we've made as homesteaders is underestimating the fencing we need for our livestock. We've been patching and fixing and repairing and putting layers and layers of fencing over it. Our goats just keep getting out. In today's video, our entire family, all of our girls are gonna come out and we're gonna rip out all of that old fencing and we're gonna put in quality livestock fencing. Fencing that we should have put in from year one. As they say, if a job is worth doing, it's worth doing well. And in today's video, we're gonna do our fencing very well, how we should have done it on day one. And we learned a lot of things along the way that we're looking forward to sharing with you also. Stay tuned and be sure to watch till the end so you can see the big reveal. We've been homesteading now for five years and on year one, as you can see in this video, we started with our goat fencing and it was the biggest mistake we've ever made. Our livestock fencing was completely inadequate. We've patched it over and over and over again. And then finally, a couple months ago, the straw that broke the camel's back. After five years of homesteading and gardening, we're about to give up gardening. I'm done, I give. We put in so much work, mostly Jen, planting seedlings in our dining room, babying them, watering them, growing them up, taking them into the greenhouse, transferring them into the garden. And after everything was transferred to the garden after months of work, you guessed it, the goats broke in under the fence and they ate everything and destroyed our garden. In today's video, our family's gonna work together, tear out all this old fencing and put in proper fencing. We're taking delivery of new fencing for our goats. And here you can see why. The goats are out again. That's all we say on our homestead over and over again. The goats are out again. We started with this welded fencing. Then we put this cyclone fencing over it. And look at this. The number one biggest mistake we've made is homesteaders. Looking back through the five years of footage we have on our homestead, there is one common theme or saying, and that is the goats are out again. The goats are out again. Hey, the goats are out again. Hey, how did the goats get out again? The goats are on top of the car. The goats out in the road. The goats on the roof. Why is the goat out by the freeway? Did you let the goats out? No, I did not let the goats out. Jeez, they're eating all the screws back here. After weeks of working on this stupid fence, we got all three goats in here now, and they're never gonna get out again. Jen and I built this whole thing here. The girls got it all painted just before the snow fell. So we're confident now the goats will be fine and they're not gonna get out of here again. We'll probably have to do some things with it. Seriously? So after five years of fixing the fence, patching the fence, tying the fence together, adding little boards to the bottom of it, we finally decided to do what we should have done from day one and ordered a proper quality fencing that's going to hold up to these goats. After a lot of research, we found a company, QualityLivestockFence.com. We were lucky enough to speak to the owner of the company named Doug. His company is family owned and everything they make is made in the USA in his hometown in Nebraska. We went with continuous fencing which comes in 20 foot lengths and connect together. The fencing is made from heavy duty 14 gauge steel which is much thicker versus most fencing. For example, the steel tube gates you can buy from your local farm supply store are usually just 18 gauge. In our five years homesteading, we've already gone through one of those gates which rusted through. The welds on these fences are impressive as well. Each weld fully encircles the cross member. Good morning. Beautiful morning. Thank you. Yeah, Good nice love. to meet you too. <laughs> we were fortunate to meet Doug who actually delivered the fencing. His father started this company and Doug showed us the fencing and gave us some tips and ideas and helped us get everything ready so that we could install it without any issues. Each one of these 20 foot lengths of continuous fencing weighs about 160 pounds. So it is super heavy duty and they've got a really nice paint job on these. I asked Doug about that, but they do use a really high quality Sherwin-Williams paint. 
Besides the continuous fencing, we also got this portable corral fencing, which we can configure. It's got a really neat pin system, so we can configure this into different shapes. We can also use it as a divider in our existing goat area, and we'll show you all of that here at the end of the video. This is probably going to be more work taking down all the old junk and patches and boards on the bottom, but that's what we're going to do now. We're going to start with this one because it's a nice straight fence. And we're going to pull down the cyclone fencing, the welded fencing, all the boards on the bottom and all the little pieces. But first we have to corral up the goats and make sure they're out of our way. We've learned over the years it's not good to have the goats around when you're working on any sort of project. All right, this fencing is great. You can position it any way you want. We could do a big rectangle. We did kind of a circle here. Put the goats in, and then you use these to connect them. And the cool thing with these are, the way they design these, they're wide enough that you could fit another gate this way, a third one. You could actually put three at one point together. This one is going to go here. Huh. This one will go right there. Oh, wow. Drop your rods, and now you don't have to set a post. Oh, I see. This one's going to... So then, two rods. Yep. All right, girls, let's get going. All right, the gate's done. Quick interruption, are you guys enjoying this video? I hope you are, we worked really hard on it. Do you like my Homestead House shirt? We're randomly giving away one of these shirts. All you have to do is leave a comment down below. Also, leave us a thumbs up, share this video on Facebook, it really helps us. But we're gonna randomly pick someone from the comments and they're gonna win one of these Homestead How t-shirts. We're gonna do it every month, so make sure to leave plenty of comments and now back to the video. That's our guest in our uh, dog kennel. Lily's taking care of this weekend. Bailey. <laughs> Bailey's gonna help us put up some fencing. <laughs> Where are we putting the fence up? I, I cut these off because they're posts. We got extra thick posts because these weren't thick enough that we're gonna put on the corners. I already put one over there and they're, they're long so I, I took a little off ahead of time and I'm using these because they're perfect spacers to put underneath the fencing so that it's off of the ground about five inches. I want the top of the fence to be four feet, 48 inches. <laughs> So 
we want to be four feet off the ground. Wow, we're almost perfect. So we got our first fence up and it looks amazing. Look how nice that looks. It's super sturdy. The thing is in there so much better than the other one. Super easy to install because it all comes together. That was the tricky part. Now we have to join these two spots. And again, the cool thing is they've thought of everything here. These are staggered. So now we can roll it back and forth, which has been helpful. We had to roll the other one to get it right at the perfect distance. So now we can slide and roll it a little bit to get it in there. Psst. Second one. Watch that one. Now I'll watch this bottom one. Are you good? Okay, push a little, just a little bit. This one, and then this one, and we should be good. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, a little bit, okay. Okay, put it up. All the way. More. Push more. That was good. Look at that! Perfect! Here. The main thing I'm doing as I go is making sure that I'm 48 inches off the ground. Four feet. Four feet, so this has got to go up just a little. I still got to put my brackets in, but we, we're lining up perfect with this. And I'm going to use the angle grinder to cut this off. And then I'm going to put a cap in it. So it should be good. I'm going to put the rest of the brackets on, but look at this thing. Man, it looks great. cool important attention to detail is right here they actually round this all over so if you have horses or something you don't want the horses to cut themselves on the top of the fencing well they use a grinder they grind it down and they weld it and it's nice and smooth and you're not going to hurt yourself on I have seen other fencing like this where it's just an open tube on the top and you can cut yourself on it and it's probably more prone to rusting so little attention to detail here. Other continuous fencing they just have like a coupling thing that goes over it and it's loose and rickety. We've already put two of these fences together and this connection right here is super tight. It's a nice strong connection. Alright so we're going to start we're going to put this one up we're working our way around the corner now and I got a couple pieces sticking over that I'm going to use the angle grinder for and the cutoff wheel to cut them flush but I'm going to do that at the end so let's see if we can get this one installed next. Now we just got to get our spacers that Alyssa's trying to get out so that we're four feet off the ground. Bracket, 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 we're good to go. So you're probably wondering why we painted these posts and now we're tearing them all out with our goat watching closely by. These ones were just too rotten and frankly I didn't have them sunk deep enough into the ground. Some of them barely had any cement. So we picked up some extra heavy duty ones I intended to just use on the corners and edges but we're going to replace this whole front part of the fence. Oh, well, they're mad that you that mom was pulling you. They're like, whoop!
So we cut those off. I touched it up a little bit with some brown spray paint where I grinded it, where the metal was showing, and I put the end cap on. We're gonna run some self-tapping screws through to hold this in, but it worked really well. We just have this temporarily on so that I could cut it easily, but now we can slide the whole thing over where we're gonna to wanna to have it permanently. So we got one more piece in here, and I just measured it, and it's exactly 20 feet from there to where I want to mount it here. So this last piece here, I'm going to measure out, I'm going to mark it. I got this silver sharpie that shows up really well. I'm going to measure that at 20 feet and cut these little nubs off here because I'm not going to need them and it should fit in there just perfectly. So it looks like I measured it perfectly. I still have to pound this in a little bit more, but I'm gonna have just enough room to get a bracket on this end piece, and the gate still has plenty of clearance, so that's exactly where I wanted it. So now we gotta make sure we're four feet up, and we gotta start bracketing this one in. Girls, let's go, brackets. I was impressed with how easy this fencing was to install. You simply measure four feet up, attach it with some brackets and some leg screws. Helps to have a nice impact wrench, but it all goes up really quickly. I decided to chainsaw a slope into each one of these large posts. That way any rainwater won't pool on the top and hopefully the posts will last a little bit longer. Once I work with my buddy Jeff Moore, the chainsaw carving artist, and get a little bit better, maybe I'll carve these into little chainsaw bears, that'd be pretty cool. If you don't know Jeff Moore, check our channel, Learning from a Chainsaw Carving Master. He's an amazing chainsaw carving artist that lives near me. Initially we planned to use this gate section to the back left of our goat house, but it was a little too tight back there and after some more thought, we really wanted to put it here yeah. and then we were going to put up the corral fencing next to it so we have a little gate and two separate areas for the goats. We can keep them on the left side or let them roam on the right and maybe in the future we'll get some more livestock to put on one side or maybe some trees or something, but this way we have a lot of flexibility. One of the really cool features with this corral fencing, we had a big circular area over there where the goats were, and right now we put this gate up, so we're going to have this multi-purpose area. Most of the time the goats are going to be able to roam this whole area, but if we want to keep them in just this area, we put these corrals up, uh, the corral fencing, and the cool thing is you can put one perpendicular like this, so you can almost go in a straight line, which is what we're doing. We've got to add another one on right there, and then it doesn't fall over. They make this part here, come look Emma. They make this part here extra wide so you can fit two pins in it. So this one's pinned over on this side, and then this one is going to go through that pin. So now we've got three of them, and it's nice and sturdy because this one's perpendicular to it. Perfect. Nice. It's nice too, so now we you, you can make any shape, but we didn't want the goats messing around with our wood pile over there. That's going to all get reused, and so we're going to make like a big goat fort, a little treehouse area for the goats. Thank you. 
So this center section with the corral fencing is temporary. It's flexible. We can move it around. We can set up a little corral outside as well. I didn't have enough brackets, so I'm going to order a couple more from QualityLivestockFence.com. In the meantime, I'm using these eye bolts, and uh, that way I've got a nice secure connection here with the corral fencing to our new gate area. Just because I know how tricky our goats are, I'm going to put a couple of eye bolts on this side as well until I get some brackets. And uh, that way I can be sure they're nice and secured in there. And I'm going to order a couple brackets, put them in some different areas so we can configure things. Nice thing with the corral fences, you really don't need these brackets, it's just a little bit extra. So it's been a few weeks since we installed all of the fencing. The snow started coming down. We had to wait for the snow to clear because Jen and I wanted to paint the goat house. You can see in the background here. And so we waited a couple weeks and it gave us a good opportunity to really test this fencing out. And after a few weeks of testing, we couldn't be more happy. The snow melted, it's sunny out again. This center gate has really been helpful. We can put the goats on one side or the other, and we're looking forward to expanding our homestead and getting some more livestock now that we have these two distinct sections. So we had the fence up for two weeks now. What do you think? I love it. I'm so excited. This is absolutely amazing. The goats have not gotten out. It looks beautiful. It's nice and strong. Yeah, we've had it going for two, maybe three weeks. We had a whole bunch of snow the other day. It's been raining. There's no way the goats are getting out of this fencing. It is so heavy duty. It's just it's impossible for them to get out now. I really wish we would have done this a long time ago, especially after all the time Jen spent in the garden. We showed a little clip of that earlier. Months and months making seedlings in the house, taking them to the greenhouse, taking them to the garden, and two days later, the goats got under our old fencing, destroyed all of that work from her entire garden. That's never gonna happen again with this continuous fencing we have now, so we're really, really happy with how this turned out. Yes. I know it doesn't really matter too much how it looks, but Man, it looks so nice, but the functionality is what we're going for. We wanted to keep the goats in, but look how nice it looks. Let's just show them one more time here real quick. We've got the corral fencing, which we can configure in any way. It's just temporarily up there. We've got this perpendicular one to keep these up because we just did a nice straight line. And then we got this really cool gate here. This is so handy. We get, we've got the goats on this section right now and they can graze over here. Like Jen was painting the goat house earlier so we just put them over in this section super easy and then when we want them on the other section we can then we got a couple more corral fences over here and I just temporarily put those there because when the girls bring the goats hay and water sometimes they get knocked into coming in that gate so now they can come in through the gate and they have this little area cordoned off and then they just move the corral fencing over and they bring them their food and water so that's working out really well Jen painted the goat house as you can see, a nice fresh coat of red paint with the white trim, so that looks really good. I got this little piece of metal up right here, it's kind of a windbreak because it's getting really cold out now. And then we cordoned off with this corral fencing right here so they couldn't get to this wood pile. This is all of our recycling from the old fence posts and wood that we had out here and then some of the chain link fencing. We're going to reuse we're gonna reuse all of that. The girls are super excited to make like a jungle gym, like a play area for the goats. They have a little bit right there, but they wanna make them a big one. So we're gonna have like a ramp go up and we're gonna have like a place they can sit because they like to sit up high. And we're gonna recycle all of that old wood to do that. So our fencing project is done. We're so happy with how it turned out. If you're interested in learning more about this fencing, check out Continuous Fencing or visit QualityLivestockFence.com. That's where we got this stuff from. Great company, great owner, was really helpful along the way, and we couldn't be more happy with how this turned out. Next time on Homestead How, I sit down with my friend, neighbor, and chainsaw carving artist, master Jeff Moore, and we watch some amazing chainsaw and tree felling videos, and we see what we can learn from those videos 
with Jeff who owns dozens of chainsaws and knows a lot more about cutting down trees than I do. This was a really fun video. Be sure to subscribe and watch that video when it comes out next week.